welcome to the parents guide to children's orthopedics and this video channel will try to explain common uh, orthopedic conditions in children also try to answer the commonly asked questions by parents uh, please subscribe to our channel so that you receive our regular updates I'm Satal Ashraid, I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon and in this video we'll go through what we call the normal variants in children. This includes flat feet in children in which there is no arches in the foot to in towing in which the child walks with both feet pointing inward and the last is both legs and not knees in which the lower limbs curved either outward or inward as we see in these pictures. Uh, this is a photograph of two children almost the same age one week only difference between their ages and one child on the right hand side has a geniverum while the other child has a genovalgum. A parent rightly or wrongly they do convey their children to other children or the siblings among themselves and when they see such differences they get worried and they seek uh, medical advice. Dr. Penticillinius, a Finnish doctor, one of the earliest who studied this condition and he studied nearly 1,000 children and he drew the angle between the thigh bone and the tibia which is the shin bone and he plotted this angle according to the age of the child and he come with what is commonly known as the Selenius curve and Selenius curve the horizontal line represents the age of the child from zero till the adolescent while the vertical line re represents the magnitude of the angles between the tibia and uh, the thigh bone or the femur zero is when the leg is straight and the angle between the tibia and femur is zero. On the top part of the curve when the legs curved in a board leg fashion or genoverum and the bottom part of the graph is when it is in genovalgum or knocked knees. If you look at the graph most of the children born with a genoverum of around 15 degrees but the range quite wide could go from as low as 3 degrees to as high as 30 degrees. Uh, the green area represents the range of normality while the dark blue line uh, represents the average for the angle between the femur and the tibia. So as I mentioned earlier most children are born with uh, both legs. If we measure the angle between the thigh bone and the tibia we find in the region of 15 degrees. As the children grow older, uh, the legs become straighter and straighter, and by the age of 18 months on average, the leg will become fully straight. Then after that, they will go to the other side. They become knock knees or genovalgum, and they gradually this uh, genovalgum increases with age to reach 10 degrees of around uh, three or four years of old age. Then after that it will go reduce with time and by the age of 7 or 8 years old they, it will drop back to 5 degrees of genovalgum. And this 5 degrees will continue with us for the rest of our life. So in summary most children are born with both legs of 15 degrees. By the age of 18 months their lower limbs become straight. Then after that they go into knock knees and they reach the maximum knock knees by the age of 3 to 4 of about 10 degrees. Then the knock knees become less and less and by the age of 7 uh, usually they are in 5 degrees of knock knees and this will continue for the rest of our life. So the question is that when parents and indeed even doctors should get worried about uh, both legs or knock knees. These are some rules of thumbs. Both legs are likely to be pathological if they're present after the age of two years. We know that uh, by the age of 18 months, the legs should be straight. Persistence of both legs after that should uh, alert us for something uh, might be wrong. A second, if it is unilateral, if one side more than the other side, as we see in this child uh, picture. Uh, if the child of short stature or short limb or overweight, these also should alert clinicians and parents there might be a problem. And if the both legs is severe, more than what is depicted by Selenius curve, in another word, outside the green area of the normal range of Selenius curve. Similarly, a uh, knock knees is likely to be pathological if they are unilateral or if they are severe. 
and the severity of knock knees is usually measured by measuring the distance between the two ankles. And we call this distance the intramedial distance. If it is 15 centimeter or more at age 5 years old and below, this is usually pathological. The same if it is 10 centimeter or more at the age of 10 years or younger, uh, this is pathological and should alert the clinician to investigate the situation further. And we finish off now with what we call the apparent both legs or the apparent genevero. Here, uh, the child usually walks with what looks like a board legs, but in reality, there's no board legs. Take this an example. As you can see, this child was brought to clinic because of what parent thought was a geno, a verum, or board legs. But when we examine the child on the couch and use the cover up test, and the cover up test we cover the lower part of the leg, you can see the knee actually in geno valgum and not in geno verum. And uh, by the way, this is one of the way to see whether we need to get an x-ray or not. If the cover-up test shows the gene valgum, there's no need to get x-ray after the age of two. But if it is a neutral or gene verum, we need to get an x-ray. There's a unique feature about the children. They usually have femoral extortion, as we see in the left-handed picture, and they have tibial intortion. And this situation creates unique features where when we uh, the femur pointing outward and the tibia pointing inward or the foot pointing inward and when the child walks we see the back of the bent knee and this gives the impression there's a gene of verum or both legs but in reality there isn't. And this is usually treated as a, a femoral extortion and tibial intortion uh, rather than gene of verum or both legs. And this will take us to the end of our video. I hope you find it useful.